Hello, welcome. In this video we're looking at trigonometry with right triangles and we're looking at the towards the bottom here is reciprocal trig ratios. We're going to do some examples from that. So um, reciprocal trig ratios, let's just make sure we're clear as to what those really are. So what are the reciprocal trig ratios that you're dealing with in in general in trig, but also specifically in this exercise set. So we have reciprocal trig ratios. All right, so let's just define them first. So uh, the first one we'll, we'll, we'll say is the secant of theta. It is the reciprocal of the cosine. So it equals one over the cosine of theta. Then we have, let's say the cosecant of theta. That's the reciprocal of the sine of theta. And then finally, we have the cotangent of theta, which is the reciprocal, as you might guess, of the tangent of theta. These are called the reciprocal trig identities because they are re the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. And you might also say, this is true if and only if this is true, that the cosine of theta is also equal to the reciprocal of the secant of theta. It's also true that the um, sine of theta is equal to the reciprocal of the cosecant of theta. So they're reciprocals of each other, of course, right? We'll talk about why that makes sense in a moment. And the tangent of theta is the reciprocal of the cotangent of theta. So all I did to get from, for example, this equation to this one over here is to swap the locations of tangent and cotangent. Here I swapped the locations of cosecant and sine to get from this side to this side. And then here I, I swapped out secant and cosine to get from this ratio to this one here. And um, the reason I, I knew, you know, even without doing that manipulation algebraically, that this has to be true, two things are reciprocals if they are reciprocals of each other. Remember that reciprocals, let's say, I'll write this down, so A and B are reciprocals when they multiply to zero, oh, to, to one. Reciprocals when they multiply, multiply to one. So what does that mean? That, that means that if I take a times b, I'm going to get one. So therefore, that means a, the only way to get one is if b equals one over a. They're going to cancel out and get one, right? So if I said to you that there's some some function sine, and it's reciprocal as the cosecant of theta, that means if you multiply them, because they're reciprocals, you have to get one. And the only way it's going to happen is if you have the sine of theta, and its reciprocal has to be one over the sine of theta, because those signs will cancel out and get you one, right? So these are my ones here, sorry. So therefore, it must be true the cosecant is one over the sine of theta. But you can also view it the other way. You can say that, well, if I know sine times sine of an angle theta times the cosecant of theta, if they're reciprocals, I get one. So therefore, the sine of theta has to be one over the cosecant of theta. Because the cosecant of theta times, the reciprocal of the cosecant of theta, or it has to multiply by the cosecant and get one. And the only way that's going to happen is that the sine of theta is one over the cosecant of theta. Because when you multiply here, these will cancel out, and these will cancel out. So in other words, I'm just saying that I know that these things are true because they have to be reciprocals not just in one direction, but in both ways of each other. And I can always test to see if I'm right because if I take the secant and I multiply it by the cosine, I will get one because again, this is one over cosine, and one over cosine times cosine is one, and vice versa here. So that's a little overview of the definitions. Now later on, we'll draw pictures to make sense of where these definitions come from and how they all fit nicely together. So how do we apply this to a problem? Well, I'm talk about it. Um, what I usually do is I say, okay, they want to know what is the cotangent of angle A. First thing, they're going to change this angle up. So look where that angle is first. I, I like to solve it this way. I, I say, well, what is the tangent of angle A? Well, that's the opposite over the adjacent. So it's 
5 over 12. So the cotangent of angle A is 1 over the tangent of angle A, which is 1 over 5 twelfths. Now when you divide by fractions, you might remember that that means you do 1 times 12 over 5. You keep the numerator or the first term, multiply, keep change flip, right? Keep multiplying and flip the other fraction and you get 12 fifths. And just notice right away that 12 fifths times 5 twelfths, those are reciprocals because when you multiply them you get 1. Right? 5 twelfths the tangent times the cotangent 12 fifths, those are reciprocals. This all cancels out and gets you 1. You get 60 over 60 which is 1. So you don't have to write these steps here. If you find the tangent, what I then do is I just essentially flip that fraction to get its reciprocal and the answer here is 12 over 5. Sometimes you might have to reduce, right? Um, so we'll look at that as well. Here, secant of angle A. So identify there's angle A. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine of theta. And you probably want it to be the reciprocal of sine because it starts with S, I get that. Um, but it is the reciprocal of the cosine. So what I find that most helpful is I find the cosine first. Cosine of angle A is the adjacent side, 7, over the hypotenuse, 25. And then its reciprocal is the secant. So it's 1 over that. Or, I don't need to write the secant of theta. Secant of angle A is, is 25 over 7. It's the fraction that when I multiply 7 25ths by it, I get 1. So 7 25ths times what fraction is 1? That's the secant, right? It's the reciprocal. So it's 25 7 and there's nothing to reduce. So we're done. Finally, we have the cosecant of angle B. So notice they're, they're shifting over here. We're looking from this angle's perspective, and the cosecant of angle B is going to be 1 over the sine of angle B. So I like to find that, but I, like in all these problems, I like to find the sine first. The sine of angle B is opposite 4 over hypotenuse 5. So it's 4 fifths. So the cosecant is of that angle is it's reciprocal. It's equal to 5 over 4. And that's our answer here. All right, hope that helps.